their own hands. Two active members of the Wyoming Stockholders Association, Major Frank Walcott and W.C. Irvine, took the first step. They created an assassination squad consisting of employees of the association. Okay, let's see. Ta da! Uh, now, uh, I'll tell you about a pet peeve I have, and that's the use of the word iconic. It's overused horribly, but if there's any iconic photograph anywhere in Wyoming, this is it. What it is is a photograph of most of the men who in 1892 went north uh, into Johnson County. Uh, but what I want to show you right now are two men. This is Major... What? Oh, no, 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 come on now. Okay. This is Major Frank Walcott, I think. Oh, there. This man right here, little short guy. Uh, this is W.C. Irvine, another little short guy. Both of them uh, owned big ranches near Glen Rock, and they were buddies. They had very similar, similar temperaments. But what happened is that, uh, as I say, Walcott and Irvine put together this assassination squad, and on orders from Walcott, Irvine, and other officials of the Wyoming Stockholders Association, and I'm referring specifically here to their executive committee, which apparently had formal votes about it, these gunmen that were put together started killing Wyoming men who had been identified as wrestlers, who it was decided should die, to use their phrase, for the good of the country. Tom Wagner, a horse trader uh, who lived near Newcastle, was the first victim, a group of three men hung in. Then they moved to Nate Champion, uh, who was a man termed the king of the wrestlers. But this was an unfounded charge. Champion's real crime was that he insisted on running his cattle on the public domain exactly as did the big cattlemen. Worse, he was a very tough guy who wouldn't be intimidated. So let's, here's a, a, a photograph of Nate Champion. Uh, he, uh, this is the only one we're sure is Nate Champion. He was just a little guy. He wasn't, he wasn't particularly impressive looking at all. But I'll tell you, he was one tough dude. Uh, the, uh, it's said that uh, Nate Champion was the model for Shane in the book and in the movie, and if so, if so, they picked well. But the big cattlemen hated him. And uh, so on November 1st, 1891, five uh, men that had constituted an assassination squad snuck up to a cabin in the middle fork. It was on the middle fork of the Powder River, where the Powder River comes out of the Bighorn Mountains. It's still just inside the, uh, uh, the canyon. Uh, and the, 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 the uh, cabin is a tiny, tiny little little structure. Uh, the cabin, it's a long story with it, it burned down and then somebody rebuilt it, it burned down again. What you can still see is the foundation. There's a hill that I remember getting on top of it, uh, looking down on it, and uh, uh, there's this little slab of, uh, of concrete uh, that's only about 30 feet off of uh, Powder River. Uh, and uh, uh, there it is. It was so small, that uh, if you put a bed in it, you could hardly get the door open. Well, um, what happened though, is that two of the men uh, broke in, uh, and I think their names were Canton and Billy Likens, Frank Canton and Billy Likens. Uh, the, both of them were waving their guns around and said, give it up, boys, give it up. And uh, too many uh, Saturday night matinees, I guess. But the uh, Nate Champion, who apparently was uh, waking out of a sound sleep, kind of stretched and said, who are you and what do you want? What he was actually doing is reaching for a gun. And he pulled down the pistol. Well, the men who had just come in there were standing right over his bed, saw what he was doing, and went, whang, whang, whang. Amazingly, they missed. Although, <laughs> well, I mean, they weren't, this is a game of finish history. But, you know, you, 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 uh, you wonder what it sounded like in that. If any of you have been inside a structure, even a big structure, with a firearm that goes off, it sounds like a cannon. Uh, and you think it would panic everybody. Well, it didn't panic uh, uh, Nate Champion. Uh, he started firing back, um, and he didn't miss. He shot one man, uh, and the, the phrase is right up the sleeve. Apparently, it didn't turn out to be a serious wound, but it didn't sound very pleasant either. And, and the, the, that guy piled out of the, the cabin. Uh, the next man, uh, Billy Likens, uh, proceeded out of the cabin, and Champion shot him right in the belly. Well, in 1889, uh, a shot like that was invariably uh, fatal. Uh, and in fact, Billy Likens died a month later in Missouri. Well, the big cattlemen uh, of Wyoming were faced with an unmitigated disaster. Having two employees shot was bad enough, but much worse. 
for the big cattleman was that this event gave rise to attempted murder charges against the identified gunman. And this is the kicker. Those are charges that would lead back to the big cattleman hiring them. And, and it's not as if the Buffalo people didn't know about it. In their newspapers, they were talking about it. Go after the guys behind these gunmen, behind these assassins. Uh, the reaction by the big cattlemen to this disaster was more violence. About December 1st, 1891, two uh, men, in separate incidents, uh, were gunned down by assassins. Uh, one was John Tisdale, and the other was Ranger Jones, mostly because they had become witnesses against the gunman who tried to kill Nate Champion. Still, Johnson County persisted in its attempted murder charges. In a dramatic prelim preliminary hearing, Champion was the star witness of the prosecution. And the result was that the two Wyoming Stockholders Association employees were bound over on the charge of the attempted murder of Nate Champion. Their employers, apparently feeling unbearable pressure because the trail would soon lead back to them, decided that something had to be done to stop Johnson County. And the April 1892 invasion of the county followed. So I'll go back to this one. Call it the class photo. <laughs> I mean, don't they look like a bunch of smug seniors? <laughs> and they were smug. They thought surely that they were going to get off. Uh, this photograph was almost surely taken in, in May of, of 19, or excuse me, 1892 uh, in Cheyenne, where they were taken. Um, and uh, it consists of most of the, the men who, who uh, uh, were involved in the invasion. Uh, and what happened is that on April 5th, 1892, um, all these men and a few more, uh, the big cattlemen and their gunmen, boarded a secret train in Cheyenne and traveled to Casper. From Casper, they rode north to Johnson County. They found and killed Nate Champion, uh, although it took them six or seven hours to do it. Uh, 50 of them had him surrounded and were blazing away. And as I say in my book, uh, it's as if he, he was holding them, holding them hostage. Finally, they found a way to push a wagon into the, uh, the cabin and then gun him down when he came, came out. But uh, the defense uh, of the, the cabin and, and uh, uh, by Nate Champion was enough that all of the people in the area figured out what was going on. A, a local rancher just, uh, who, just north of Champion looked over and he said, no, no, I can see what's going on. They've been always talking in the newspapers. They have expected some kind of an invasion. So he immediately went to the sheriff. Uh, other people in the whole area, uh, you can imagine, they, they were tough frontiersmen back then. They grabbed their Winchesters and out they went. And, and it didn't take very long that, that the, all these men were forced down into an area that is now called the TA Ranch. Uh, and they were surrounded by uh, posse members who, who finally worked out to a number of about 400. Um, if you've ever had a chance to go to the TA Ranch, it's still there, uh, although it's in private ownership. Well, the people are pretty good about letting you go on there. I've been several times. But it is just a marvelous place, uh, uh, such a sense of history about it. I, I've been to uh, Antietam and I've been to Shiloh, and, and you get the same kind of feeling. Uh, when you look, uh, and what happened is that for three days uh, the posse blazed away at these guys and they started uh, closing in on them using a device called a go devil, but I don't have time to go into all that, but whatever. They were about to get them is what it came down to and up showed the, the United States Mounted Cavalry, uh, summoned there by Republican politicians. I'll go into that too in a little while. But, but the, the uh, Cavalry took them into uh, custody. They were then sent down to uh, uh, Cheyenne, and this is this is where you where you see them. Uh, a very unfortunate thing. If you read my book, you know that's exactly what I think. Is that every one of them evaded criminal punishment? A shameful trial was held in Cheyenne in January 1893 when all charges were dismissed. The cattlemen didn't get off scot free, however. The people of Wyoming incensed by the arrogant and lethal actions of big cattlemen throughout virtually every Republican up for election in 1892. Wyoming citizens punished the Republican Party, and I don't mean to make it political, but it, they did a pretty bad thing in 1892. They punished them, them severely because it so obviously supported the big cattlemen and their murderous raid on Johnson County. Another indirect consequence of the invasion was that in 1893, Members of the Wyoming Stockholders Association were forced by desperate financial conditions 
to forever change the nature of their organization. If the association was to continue, all cattlemen had to be allowed in, including the little guys, not just rich cattle barons. After 1893, most of the membership of the Wyoming Stockers Association foreswore violence, but a small segment still believed that killing settlers was appropriate to protect their financial interests. This small group, which included John Coble and Ora Haley, who were two big ranchers in southeast Wyoming, turned to an assassin, Tom Horn, as their instrument uh, to bully, coerce, and intimidate settlers. There's a boy. Thank <laughs> you.